Okay, welcome to Assistive Technology for Reading. This is a re-recording of the workshop, or the webinar, held on November 15th, 2023. Hello everybody, my name is Paul Sanft. I'm the director of the Simon Technology Center and an Assistive Technology Specialist. Um, this workshop was done on the 15th of November, 2023. This is a re-recording because we had some technical difficulties, um, but I'm just going to run through the entire workshop again. There is no chat, um, so I won't be able to answer any questions there, but if you have questions, our contact information will be in the description of this video, as well as the links to the handouts um, which contain all the information that we're going to be going through today. Um, speaking of which, here is a QR code to that handout, but um, you can also find a link to this handout, which contains a list of everything I'm going to be covering today um, in the description. A um, couple things here. Um, this is a recording, so we don't have to worry about chat. Um, you're welcome to comment on the video. Um, we don't have people regularly checking these videos, so if we don't get back to um, uh, uh, in a timely manner, uh, I'm sorry about that, but definitely reach out to us um, at our contact information in the description, uh, as well as we don't have a certificate of attendance. Um, during our live webinars, we do have that as an option, but this is a recording. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Um, today's agenda, I split it into two different categories. One is tools for reading text that's been printed, so on paper, um, and then tools for reading digital text. Um, and I broke it down into a couple things there, a couple different categories there. Um, but we don't really have time to show you how to use each of the tools, but I will give a brief demo on what they do, how they're useful, so you can get an idea of if if that tool is something you'd like to learn more about. So this is just going to scratch the surface on some of the tools that are out there. There's so many more, and I can't possibly know what's going to be the best tool for you. Uh, to help you learn more about that, you can consider some of our services at the Simon Technology Center. So stick around to the end, uh, at the end, to learn about some of our services and the ways that we can help you identify which of these tools might be the best fit for you. All right, so let's dive in. Um, first thing I want to talk about are some really basic things, um, reading helpers, um, colored overlays, things that, that you can have with you to help make text a little bit more manageable, a little easier to read. I'm going to show you a couple of those here that we have um, as an example. Um, so what we have here forgive the black screen, there we go, um, are a couple of different um, colored overlays. Well, we'll start with the reading helpers first. Um, these reading helpers here, they look like the, uh, different bookmarks, um, but when you take some, some printed text, uh, basically this helps you just uh, stay in line on the text sort of highlights the line that you're looking at as you read through. It's really, they come in lots of different colors. Um, they're discreet. Uh, they can just be used as a bookmark. Uh, so they're really nice. These are called reading helpers. Um, links to information about these is in that handout. The other item we have here um, this is called See and Read. It's kind of the same concept, uh, but you can see this one spans the entire width of the page, um, but it's a little thicker, so it covers up a little bit more. Viewfinder inactive. Okay, let me just hit that button. Sorry about that. Um, covers up a little bit more, um, if that's going to be helpful for you. And they come in different sizes, but uh, that one's called the See and Read. And then there's the colored overlays. Um, there's not a ton of research on the benefits of colored overlays. They can make things a little bit easier on the eyes, maybe a little less strain on the eyes, and they can just be fun as well. What you want to make sure is get some that have this um, non-glare coating on it. If you see the backs of these are very shiny and can be disruptive, but on the one side there's sort of this non-glare uh, coating, which can be helpful um, for you know, eliminating glare. 
So those are colored overlays, see and read and reading helpers, um, all very um, affordable and easily accessible tools. Uh, the specific ones that we have are linked in the handout, um, but we don't make any specific recommendations on which ones are the best. These are just the ones that we've used and have been pretty popular. All right, so moving on. The next thing we can look at is text magnification. And this is the a couple of different devices I have here are more than just magnifying glasses. Um, let me go back here. Um, you can see the Optelec Traveler HD on the right here is a little bit bigger, um, gives you that, that larger screen to work with. But the one I'm going to show today is the Compact 6. I do believe are already up to like version eight or something. The one we have is just the, the, the version six here, but a lot of the same concepts apply. Um, so if we have our document here, um, this just sits over the top of it. It has a nice little stand on it, easy to move around, um, fits in a big pocket or a bag. If I turn this on, if I hold the button to turn it on, You can see it is it is an electronic device, um, so it's a bit more than just using a magnifier. But once it boots up here, there we go. It's it's being a little slow here. Maybe I'll cut that out of the final video. Um, we're going to switch to the magnifier, and here you can see it is magnifying that text. Um, and not only that, you'll notice it gives you this high contrast option as well. Um, so you'll see here, this is actually black on white is the actual text, but here it's flipped it to high contrast. You can change that in the settings. Um, but you could take a picture of it, um, and when you take a picture of it, um, it actually then can read that text to you, um, which is really nice. Um, so that is the Optelic Compact 6. I think the current version available right now is the version 8. Um, but wonderful little device for magnification. And OCR, which stands for Optical Character Recognition, you could take the picture uh, of the item and it will read to you. Um, nice and slick. The next group of things we're going to look at are more, even more handheld items. Um, these are the C Pen Reader, the Iris Pen Mouse Air 7 is the one we have. The Iris Scan, uh, or sorry, the Iris Pen Air 7, and the Iris Scan Mouse, and the Iris Scan Book version 3. And I want to start um, with the C Pen Reader. That's a pretty popular item. Um, so you can see it's about the hi a highlighter size. Let me get this in front of my face here. What will it focus on? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, and I'll show you how it works. Um, if we have our document over here, um, so it's warming up, and you can see it has, uh, I'm not sure how well you could see that, but there's a little button that pushes here, and that's what does the scanning. But if you hold it to your text, and then you scan, you press down and scan across, Um, it then reads that straight back to you, and you can kind of see eh, it's not focusing, um, but it's reading that text to you. If I go back to my print, I can then scan the next line. The Simon Technology Center Lending Library provides short-term loans for our weeks. Four, four. Um, so that is um, the C-Pen Reader and how that works. There is a headphone uh, plug, so you can plug headphones into that. Um, the newer version, so there's one thing to consider when looking at this one, um, is that you do have to have some pretty significant dexterity. You need to be able to grasp this, you need to be able to drag it across, and you need to be able to drag it across accurately without going crooked or up or down or anything, because then it just 
will read nonsense. So that's important to note. The newer version um, will, all, will allow you to scan multiple lines before it starts reading. This older one just starts reading right away. So something to keep in mind when you're looking at something like this. It can be super helpful a lot of time for, for that right person. A lot of times it's used for reading word problems during tests, things like that. Um, but a little bit harder if you're trying to read like an entire book that, that might not be a very good option. The other device that we have that is similar to this is the Iris Pen Air. And you can see it's very similar in its design and concept. Oh, sorry, I keep bumping this camera. Um, in that it has a little scanning option and you scan it across here. The difference with this one is it's not self-contained in that it doesn't then just read it to you. It scans this and sends it to a computer um, or mobile device that it's connected to by Bluetooth. So that's important to note. You do have to have another device for this one to work. Um, but you can scan the whole page and that scans it in there. So a little bit different concept, uh, same, similar form factor. Um, they also, I'm going to skip ahead of the mouse, they also have a much bigger version of scanning um, called the Book. This is 3. I'm actually not sure what versions they're currently on. But you can see this thing scans an entire page at a time. Now this one can send it to your device, but it can also give you a readout here, um, give you a little bit more control, and can play back what's been read. So it has a little bit of a, that C pen um, feature in it, a uh, little bit bigger, but it's essentially a portable scanner where you drag it down. A um, little bit different form factor, um, but a few more features. And then lastly on the scanning area, this is actually a scan, the scan mouse, and it's just how it sounds. It actually works as a mouse, um, so you plug it in, and it just acts as an ordinary mouse, but on the side, there's a scan button, and when you hold that, this little window here is actually a little scanner. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see that. It might be a little blurry, but you can scan then your whole page uh, or document. And what's nice about that is the dual function. It can just be sitting on your desk as a mouse. You can use it as an ordinary mouse. And then in the moments that you need to scan something, it's right there. You don't have to grab another device. You just hit the button and start scanning it. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature if you like that, um, I don't know, space saving or two-in-one device. Kind of a neat concept. So those are kind of the, the some of the main scanning items. A um, couple other things to look at. Um, we don't have the, the clear reader plus here, but you can see in the picture, it's not quite a scanner, not quite a magnifier. Um, you hold the paper underneath uh, this, this item here, and it takes a picture, and then it converts just the text. So it doesn't magnify the whole page like the Optilic um, uh, Compact that we saw earlier. It just gives you the text and gives you a little bit more control. Um, pretty nice option. Um, but next I'm going to look at these OrCam things. I don't have the My Eye handy, but it has some of the same concepts as the reader, but in a more compact form that you can actually wear on your glasses. Uh, instead, I have the OrCam Read here to demonstrate. Um, you can see similar form factor what we've been seeing. It's small, can fit in a pocket, um, has a power button here on the side. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And then I'll show you how this one works with our document here. Um, so how this works is you can take the picture by pushing this button here, and it just scans an entire page. So I'm going to hold this up, and I'm not sure how much of this you can see. Let me see if we can see these lasers here, if I can get it to, to focus on that. Okay, there we go. All right, it's ready. 43% charge, battery's ready, okay. So it takes a little while to boot up here, but then if I hold this, you can see, I'm not sure if you can see those lasers a um, little bit here, but you can choose the whole page 
or just a portion of the page, you let go. There, and so you heard it, I don't know if you heard it take that picture there, um, but now you can read that back. I'm gonna switch over to here. Um, Volume up. Volume down. Suspending. Press again to shut down. Nope, I, I hit the off button. Let me play that back now. Suspended. Suspended. Oh, it just turned off. <laughs> there we go. It's still booting up here. Um, but that's the idea behind this one. This has been a really popular item. And it's not acting well for me right now. There we go. Battery is 43% charged. All right, let me do that again here. Switching over to this guy. Um... Reset the camera, and I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy. Took the picture. Pacers Silent Technology Center, Lending Library, a library of assistive technology. About the Lending Library, the Silent Technology. Um, so as soon as you snap the picture, it starts reading to you. It's really handy. Um, I was jumping the gun here. you got to wait for it to boot up, and then it's ready to roll. Um, but you do need to be able to see where the document is and line it up. Um, and then it does have that robotic voice. We've seen a lot of tools in here have a pretty robotic voice, um, which is something to, to consider. Um, but it's nice and quick and handy. can fit in your pocket to, to read whatever you need. Um, that is the OrCam read. All right, if we move on then, we're going to look at a couple of different apps that can help you with reading printed text. Now, um, these first three ones, three apps, Prismo, Claro, and Office Lens are kind of slightly different versions of tools that do about the same thing. So I'm just going to demonstrate Prismo today. Prismo only works on iOS devices, so an iPhone or iPad. Um, Office Lens comes with Microsoft Office Suite, so if you have like you know Excel and Word and all that, it comes with that. Um, Claro is a free version that maybe doesn't do all of the same things, um, but is a nice way to have the concept of using a device, taking a picture of a, a document, and it essentially scans that and, and makes that readable. So let's go ahead and take a look at Prismo here. Um, and so it, you can't see a lot on this. Sorry, that's a little bit small here, but I'll bring up the app. And there's this little camera button down here. When I hit that, it brings up your device's camera, and then you can just... Uh, take a picture of the page. Here, let me line it up here. And boop. So it took a picture of that. And now if we had more pictures, I could keep taking more pictures. If it was a multi-page thing, I'm going to hit done. Um, and then we see an image of this document here. Um, you have some different controls. You can crop it to make sure you get it just right. Um, but then when you hit recognize up here, scans it, looks for text, and now you can see here is all of the text um, that it pulled off of there. It even recognizes when some things are images or links, um, which is kind of nice. And then what you can do is you can change the order of things. You can add different comments to it. But then when you export it, you have the option. I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom in a little bit. Fancy zoom. You have the option to export the file, just the text, or even have it read aloud to you. And so there it pulls out all the text, and then we'll read that to you. About the lending library, the Simon Technology Center lending library. So that's how that one works. That is called um, Prismo. Um, there is a free version of it. Oh, that one's shutting down. Um, there is a free version called Prismo Go, which is essentially just a trial of this. Um, but that can be a nice way to see if it's something that would be helpful for you. Claro Scan, Office Lens, they all work in the same way in that they use a mobile device to they use a mobile device to take a picture and then they can scan that and read it to you. Um, so nice features in there. Uh, the last thing I want to look at, which is a similar concept, is Captive Voice. Um, I'm going to switch over to my computer here. 
Um, and Captive Voice is um, something that, that works online. Um, and they do have um, versions for individuals. Right now we're looking at a version for an entire class so you can have different assignments. But if we look at the library of documents, um, you can import any type of document. This is a scan or a picture of, of some text from a textbook. And it recognizes this as text. Um, and then it can convert it to um, different types of font, it changed the background, it changed the spacing, um, it essentially makes everything um, easier to read. And you do have control over the looks of this. So there's lots of different tools that do this. Um, so if you have pictures uh, or scans, you can just import that into your different documents and then you have control over it. It's a really, really neat tool in that, in that sense. All right. So moving on to a couple of other items, we're going to look at digital text. That was kind of our introduction there to digital text. Um, once you have text in digital form, you have a lot more control over its appearance um, as, as well as having it read out loud to you. Uh, makes it a lot easier um, because once if you have things in print, it has to be converted. There can be issues with converting. So having things in digital format is, is going to be a, a huge helper. Um, but the first thing I want to look at is looking at things online um, through a browser. And so I'm going to switch over and we're going to look at Reader View first. Um, Reader View, um, if we're looking at um, a website here. So here's a website from National Geographic on photosynthesis. A lot of helpful text here, but there's also some distracting items. There's pictures, there's more links to other pages. This is actually a pretty pretty good page. But using a Chrome extension called Reader View, um, if you hit that, it will convert it then to just the text. And you also have a little bit of control over the appearance of the text. Um, so I can go into here and change, um, you know, the, the background, change the font height, lots of neat controls over it. You can also have just the text read to you as well. Um, so here's your controls for having it read out loud to you. Um, but that can be, can be really helpful. Um, and then I just close out this and I'm right back to the regular um, page. Um, Post Light Reader is another Chrome extension that does this. Post Light Reader, um, just a, a, another one that maybe has less features but works in the same way. Um, but you also, if you have um, Safari or Microsoft Edge as your browser, those features, that reader view phrase, those are actually built into those two browsers, which is nice. If you're using Chrome, you have to get an extension for it. I, I don't think Chrome has built it into their, their browser quite yet. I could be wrong, um, but there's a lot of different extensions that, that give you that capability. Um, the next thing I want to look at now is read and write. That's another tool for online reading as well as writing. Um, we're going to be looking that, at that next month in our workshop on tools for writing, but there's some reading features as well. This is another Chrome extension. If I'm on a page and I come up here to this Chrome extension and open that up, it gives me an extra toolbar. Um, with lots of different features for reading and writing. There's you know things like word prediction and all that. But if I select my text, um, I can then hit play. Let me turn the volume up. And let me let me get that. Uh, there we go. Grades five eight subjects by a so it can read that whole page or it can read just what you have selected. There's other. There's also a really nice feature that I like is this thing right here, which is this focus feature. It kind of um, blocks out everything and just follows your cursor. So you'll use your mouse to move down. It's kind of like the those uh, reading helpers that we looked at, only in digital format, which is pretty slick. Um, you can hit this and turn that back off. Um, and, and so... There, there's also some dictionaries in here, including just a, any word that you have selected here. Let me just grab photosynthesis, hit that, boop. 
and now it gives me a straight up dictionary. There's also um, what's called the picture dictionary. So if I grab photosynthesis and hit that, um, it gives me pictures of those words, which is, which is kind of nice. Um, but the other thing that I really wanted to show off here um, if I select this, let me see which one is it. It's not the screenshot audio maker, not the web search, or the translator, which is really nice. We have a simplify page. That's the one I want to look at. Um, and rewordify. So if I hit rewordify, boop, it's going through the whole entire document, actually. And what it's doing now is everything that you see here if you click it, it gives you a different version of that word. So as you read through and you come across difficult words, you can see that they're kind of highlighted. Carnivores, click that. Um, obtain and can switch to get. Uh, let's see, here's photosynthesis again, making light from food. So it takes organelles, uh, special parts of cells that perform particular functions. So it's kind of like giving you a simplified dictionary or a thesaurus just built right in. So as you're reading these tough words, you can click on them to get a little reminder of what, what, they, what they mean, which is pretty cool. Um, and then the simplify, if we hit that, it does kind of the same thing that we saw with re, uh, reader view in that um, it simplifies the page. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and, and you can have a little bit of control over how it looks as well. So that is read and write. Um, there's also Claro Read, which is a free version that has some of the same features, but it mostly reads to you. It doesn't give you all of the tools that Read and Write does. It's just be a, an option to have a tool similar to this within a browser. Um, kind of nice. All right, let's move on uh, to some more um, adjustments to the appearance of your text. And I want to start by looking at Immersive Reader. Immersive Reader is a tool that you're going to find in Microsoft products. So if you have Microsoft Word, if you have Outlook, if you have um, OneNote, uh, this is going to be a feature built into those. I don't think it's going to be in Excel, but I could be wrong there. Um, but if we take a look at Immersive Reader in um, Word, so this is just, uh, sorry, hit the wrong button. Um, if this is just um, our handout. And this is what it normally looks like, the handout with all the tools that we're looking at today. Um, but if I go to View, there is an Immersive Reader button. And I hit that, and really quickly what you see is it changes. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see. It changes the appearance of that text. And what it's also doing right now is it's separating the syllables, which can be really helpful for sounding out longer words and just keeping track of them. You can also turn that off because it can be distracting too. Um, but then you can also hit read aloud. Technology list. Assistive technology for reading, November 15, 2023. And one thing I'll say is that voice is so much, I mean, I can't emphasize how much better that voice is compared to some of the robotic voices that you're hearing. So that alone can be a, a valuable tool um, to, to have. If I do that again, um, go down to here. Tools for reading print text. Um, and I just read that line because that's the only thing I highlighted. Um, but that voice uh, is is much more human sounding. You can change the speed of it and things, but it's it's really helpful. There's also some controls on uh, page color, so you can change the background, kind of like what those overlays do. Um, and then this is nice. We have the um, line focus again. Um, but this one doesn't move with your cursor. You have to scroll the page, so it just always stays in the middle. Um, you can hit this button to move up line by line, which is nice. You can also change how many lines are in focus, which can be pretty cool. And then, of course, you can turn that off entirely. 
Um, you can adjust the column width as well, um, but but those are some of the really nice tools in Immersive Reader. Um, I also noticed there is a focus option, which that just gets rid of everything else in Word for you, which is kind of cool. And you just hit Escape to get back out of there. Um, so that's a really nice feature, um, and that's called Immersive Reader. You don't need to have a purchased version of Word um, or Microsoft. You can just get a free Microsoft account and use the online version, which is like their Google Docs, if you're familiar with that. And these tools are in their online versions as well. So you don't need to have a paid version of Microsoft products in order to use that tool. But then it's only available on the web if you're using the free versions. The next thing I want to look at is Beeline Reader. And I want to look at this because it's actually pretty unique. Um, I'm going to switch back over to my computer. And Beeline Reader is a really neat tool um, in changing the way text looks. And I'm just going to go to their website to show it off. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, and if you look at this text and what it's doing, you'll notice if you look on the left, each line is a different color. And see how it alternates black, blue, black, red, black, and then another paragraph, black, blue, black, red. But it doesn't just have those lines different colors. It gradually changes to that color. So when you get to the end of this line, it's now the, co the color of the next line. That can be really helpful for anybody who skips lines um, and just it be helpful in keeping that flow as you're going through. Um, you can also have a little bit control. You can make it darker, which on this screen it's really hard to see. Um, you can have it just be blues with just a, a hint of kind of purplish. You can have just grays. Um, turn it off entirely. So this is a tool that you can use online. You can install it uh, on your in your computers. Um, really, um, you can add it to Chrome. Um, really nice tool um, and just unique. It's something you don't see all the time, so I like kind of showing that one off as because if you haven't seen anything like that before, um, it, it can be a game changer for for the for the right person. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about are um, dyslexic uh, um, designed fonts. So there hasn't been a lot of research around this, um, but there are some fonts that are showing some promise in being easier for some people with dyslexia to read. And how they do it is they have the, the fonts are weighted at the bottom. If you look at this text right here, you see the O is thicker at the bottom than the top, the D is thicker, and all the letters are like that. Um, and you can actually install this font for free on your computer. Um, I'm using opendyslexic.org. Um, there's a lot of different styles of fonts like this. A lot of them cost money. This one is free though. Um, you can download it um, and completely for free and, and then install it on your machine, um, which is really nice. You have lots of different options for that. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, if you've never installed a font before, um, go ahead and reach out to us at the Simon Technology Center. We can help you with that process if that's something you want to try. You can also just, um, there are some different dyslexic fonts, I believe, in Word 2, the, uh, Word that, that um, have available and you can try out. Um, and then lastly, for visual appearance, this kind of, I, I won't go too far into it, is Voice Dream Reader. If you're using a mobile device, Voice Dream um, only works on Apple devices, but it's the same concept as Immersive Reader um, with just a couple other features built in. Um, so I'm going to switch over to my other camera here. And sorry about the shaking on the camera. But if we go to... Um, voice dream up here and we look at some text um, it's kind of neat in that here this is just this the the normal text you can have it read to you welcome to voice dream reader thank you for being a customer and you'll you'll, you'll hear um, that this text um, 
It's not as nice as immersive reader's uh, text, but it is for the robotic voice. It's one of the better ones. Um, but you have some complete control over font and spacing. So, of course, you can make the font bigger, um, but you can make character spacing. You can make line spacing. You can do side margins. Um, you can change the font entirely. Um, you also have color settings, so you can... Um, you can switch to dark or custom colors that you want in the background. Um, and you also have that same idea where you can have different lines visible at a certain time, which is cool. Um, and then free scrolling or page scrolling, things like that. Um, and you also, as you go through, there's this bookmark feature. And if you highlight text, you can bookmark um, in those different spots. So it can actually be helpful in, in just doing homework and trying to remember important parts you can bookmark use this bookmark tool uh, to do that um, but if we go to our shelf we see we just have a couple of different things here but you can import all sorts of different things you can use the scanner which will take a picture kind of like what we saw you can import a web page um, you can import files that are saved to this you can even connect things like bookshare and evernote and your google drive and dropbox um, which is really nice to have files stored in there, which automatically get loaded into here. So what's kind of nice about that is it's giving you kind of this connected tool. Um, one of the hard things that we've seen with a lot of these tools is you might have your text in a place that's hard to get to the tool that is gonna do the reading for you. This is kind of nice because it can connect a lot of different storage options for text and then just whoop, import it right in there and then have control over how, how that text looks. Um, so that's voice stream, kind of a neat concept there. And if we move on, um, I also, we're, we're almost at the end here, but I also want to just give a shout out for the concept of the built-in text-to-speech. Um, every, if you're on any website, um, you can just um, ask with your phone. You can ask your phone, you can say, hey Siri, read this page out loud, or okay Google, read this page to me, and it will just read that out to you. And I also mentioned Bookshare. Um, Bookshare is a nice resource for getting digital text. Um, it, to use it, though, you do need to have um, a visual-related disability. So there's a lot, uh, something to uh, consider there. But go ahead and check out their website if you, you want some more information on that. Um, and then lastly... I won't demonstrate those. I just wanted to talk about audiobooks as a great option. Learning Ally has a lot of options for, for audiobooks. Um, that, that has a cost to it. Um, but Libby, Libby is a great app that can connect you to your um, public library and you can have access to their audiobooks right on your device or just their electronic versions um, of text um, so that you can have your device read to you. Um, and then, of course, Audible is a popular um, um, source for audiobooks. Those are usually performed by people, which means that it's going to be a lot easier to follow than listening to some of these robotic voices that, that we've had um, as examples in some of these other tools. So those are just a couple of great resources um, for, for getting your hands on audiobooks. Um, and that's it. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about Pacer. Um, if you're not familiar with Pacer and what we do, check out our website, pacer.org. Um, if you signed up for a workshop or any future workshops, you'll have been to this website. But we have so many different programs um, centered around helping individuals with disabilities from you know special education information our national bullying prevention center national transition and employment center um, the list goes on and then of course we have uh, the simon technology center um, where i work and some of our main services are just helping you answer questions and find resources um, finding information about assistive technology 
And one of the ways we do that is we actually have a lending library with over 1,500 different items. In fact, everything that I showed today, all of the devices are from our lending library and can be checked out. Um, our library is free for Minnesota individuals and families as well as professionals. Um, there is a charge if you're out of state or if you're uh, an, an organization. Um, but if you are an individual living in Minnesota, um, uh, those, those are free memberships. We also offer free consultations and individualized training. So if you don't know where to begin in learning about technology, um, assistive technology specifically, um, reach out to us in our consultations and one of our staff will work with you and your support team and help you narrow down all the potential tools that are out there that might be helpful. We don't make any official recommendations, we don't do assessments, but we help you um, uh, sort of begin that research and identifying what tools might be, be helpful for you. Um, and then when you find a tool, we can help train you on it. Um, we can't train on every tool because we haven't seen every tool that's out there, but we're able to train on a lot of the most popular tools that, that exist. Um, so something to look at, um, into if you're needing help learning about something specific. Um, and we don't have an evaluation here because this is a recording, um, but if you have any questions, reach out to us um, at the Simon Technology Center. If you call, make sure you leave a message um, so we can get that directed to the right person and we'll get back to you as soon as we can, but go ahead and email us, stc at pacer.org. Check out our website to learn a little bit more, and thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you at a future webinar.